Well, here we are. And I've decided that today's the day I'm going to start building up the compound, um, joint compound. I'm using this multi-purpose joint compound. Apparently, it's a total jointing system for plasterboard. Well, I've never used it for plasterboard. And what my plan is, is just to build it up, 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 and then create some texture with it. Might use some bubble wrap to push it down and here as well and then let it dry and then color it now i've been such a duffer i haven't got my tripod with me so it's going to be a funny little video because i'm only going to be able to show you bits and pieces of it so right now what i'll do is open it and then we'll have a look at it and I'll get my spatula and show you the consistency and I'll show you me putting a little bit down here then I'll turn the video off I'll build it up bring you back show you then show you some texture how does that sound good it's a plan let's go okay so let's get in and have a look at the texture it's quite thick and really really creamy and it's so easy to work with as you can see so I'm just going to pull it over and move my camera very slowly and just show you how I'm going to pull it over oh, I need my other hand and just build it up like this oops out of screen all right so I'm going to do that all here and then I'll bring you back and show you how I went see you in a second all right so i've built it up and i've got this texture i'm not going to do the bubble wrapping i actually quite like this texture i've left it a little bit rough here so i can show you and i'm just doing the texture simply by bringing my palette knife up and down and just helping it be texturized much like i would texture oh go away man next door while i'm trying to talk I might have to do the voiceover. Anyway, let's see how it goes. I'm going to get my burnt umber now and mix a little bit of it up into water and make it quite runny and wash it through all of the compound that's really well dried and it has cracked which I actually like because I'm going to then wash some gold over that and help that sink in and it's looking really quite effective at this stage um, do you like the little bits of crushed glass just gently and delicately scattered not too much which is amazing for me because I'm very heavy-handed with sparkle and the overall effect at this stage is looking really really nice I've chosen to go the dark umber to pick up the brown in here um, and then I'll lighten it with some gold as I was mentioning before um, and then I think I might even put some blue effects into the resin over the brown to help pick up this but it'll be a darker blue so I'm going to get on with that process and just show you as I go how I've done it. Well, here we are a day later. And as you can see, it's only the, I've done it with brown and then a little bit of gold. And fundamentally, it, well not fundamentally, it is all the same brown. 
just ew yuck look at that it was the brown umber and I used it with different um, levels of water thickness so you can see where it's more translucent in some areas and darker in other areas and that was just simply here the lighter areas where it was thinner with water and here where it was thicker and then I've squirted a little bit of gold paint onto some areas just to give it even more dimension and depth um, and the movement I used with the application was dappling so in say that there's a bit of paint on there and then just pretty much doing this the whole way around and then on the sides just oh sorry on the sides letting it come down but I'll finish that off before I resin it I might just do the whole sides in gold um, just so that it doesn't look grotty and not these parts here I'll leave that raw so I'll do that later this afternoon I'll leave that as a feature and then do that gold and then around the back gold and I'll add two layers of resin the first layer I'm going to add to here is going to have some of the blue some blue sort of mixed into it but I'm going to keep it quite translucent so that the brown and gold still shows up but where it pulls it will have um, some extra depth and shimmer and then all of this will I'll just do 100% clear and I'll keep building it building upon it in the end it will probably have maybe three coats of resin or actually probably two so I'll do all of this in one coat to begin with um, adding the blue in it and then I'll do a final flood coat over the whole lot the compound itself it looks quite brittle and I'm scared of it I'm scared that if I knock it it'll crack but it's been okay so it's it is very strong it's just a material I'm not used to using it so I don't have a lot of confidence you know how when you get used to a material you can um, a product you can throw it around and slap it around I'm still a bit nervous with this and I must say it was really fun and easy to use and I'll certainly be um, using it again I'll show you my second project that I'm going to build around in that same um, idea. So yeah, nice little bits of crushed glass. They'll pop a little bit more. I feel like I want to put more crushed glass pieces into the final event, but I'm not going to. I'm going to restrain myself. Can you believe it? Um, can anyone remember if I used silicon in this? It doesn't feel like it, but I think I'll still give it a really good wash just to make sure I've got the best possible outcome first time. You know if you get your little craters, don't stress about it, just let your resin cure for 12 hours and re-pour. You know, a lot of people don't talk to you about the idea that it is really common to have to do another coat of resin. Um, and if you want to make your resin thinner so that it spreads further, just add a little bit of acetone, um, like, five percent so if you mix so for every 100 ml add five teaspoons that's it um and it will make your resin thinner for a coat but if you're wanting it domed that's not what you do but that's a whole different conversation all right that's it over and out over and out um i think i'll upload this as part two and then the resin can be part three all right okay by the way, it's Easter Saturday. Have an awesome Easter break, everyone. Regardless of what your belief system is, we all tend to join in on the public holidays. So have a great time with your family and all that good stuff. Right, here we are. Let's make sure you're in focus. Are you in focus? Oh, I have to climb up these stair things to check. Yep, and you can see oh, pretty much all the way to the back. I know you can see to the back. All right, very good. Let's get onto it. Move my little stairs out. The, you know those little kids' stairs to help them reach the hand basin bowl. So two thirds of a cup of resin and now I'm just going to literally pour it into here and across here 
like so. I'm going to leave myself a little bit in the cup for areas where I don't want to overstretch. One of the things I see is people not using enough resin. And that can be equally as a problem as um, many other things because they're asking their resin to stretch way too much and it just won't do it. So as you can see, well, I hope you can see because I'm having to do the tilting because I like tilting it before I wrap my hands into it. We've got a really good amount of coverage, but most importantly, I wonder if I do that and you see the reflection. You can see that there are no crevices coming up and the crevices that were here, here are being successfully covered like they were never there. <coughs> Put this down. And now I'll just get into pulling this across with my fingers. Now I'm being really dainty. You know, you can actually move it with quite a bit of vigour. Here, rubbing my fingers across the side so that they get that nice little bit of coverage. Pulling it in. Do you see that nice big wave of it? Resin wave. Okay, and one of the best ways I've found to check your coverage is really simple and it's just going down to eye line dropping yourself down to eye line and looking at the reflection you'll be able to monitor where there are air bubbles and potential areas that you've missed it's don't don't miss this part it's really easy to think that you've got every part and so disheartening when you go back to see a tiny little area that you didn't cover and when, if that happens, you do have to cover the whole lot again because um, you can see a little bit of area that is left uncovered. Oh, no, that's not making sense. I'm not just going to say anything. Oh, I'm having such a hard week. Even getting a sentence together for you today is a bit hard. What I mean is that if there's a little bit left uncovered and you let it cure, you do have to flood coat the whole lot because by covering that little bit, you'll see a little thin, clear, fractured line. And whilst um, you might think that you can't see it, you can because when the light reflects on it, it just, for some reason, shows. That's why you have to do the f whole flood coat. God, I still don't reckon that made much sense. Let me know if I made any sense then or not you know, in that comment thing. All right, we're looking pretty good. I'm dropping down to the side. I can't see any area that's left uncovered. I have got a little bit of resin left, so I will build it up. And I'll put it into the middle like the, well, like how you just saw me. and let it find itself where it wants to actually sink or cover rather on the canvas. I think one of the reasons I use less than what's um, given on the most common resin calculator is because they're calculating if you're on a hard substrate. You know, we're using canvas, so it, it does have a tendency to sag if you're not careful or not supporting it up at the back. So giving it that wash with the hot water would have helped the canvas shrink too, but really that's a part that should be done at the beginning before we even poured. Geez, the colours have really popped. It's looking really, really nice. Okay, 
I'm done. I've just got to give it a quick torch off. I'll take my glove off to do that. Hopefully we don't find anything where I have to touch the resin. And so just a nice quick flick. Woo! Don't put anything on fire. Oh, come on. Oh, you know how I said everything is happening, but it's going the hard way? Even that, like, I'm tipping my torch like this, which you should be no problem, and it's going higher and higher in gas distribution, making the flames stronger, hence it catching on fire. How painful. Alright, I've got a few little bits here that need a bit of extra coverage, so I'm going to tilt this back. Make sure they're covered. I'm going to have to torch it again, which means I'm going to have to put another glove on again. Oh, the woes of my life. It's really not that bad, is it? Okay, that's looking good. How are you going there? Good. Oh, it was a cell. It looked like um, it, it looked like the area hadn't been covered, but it was actually a cell of the painting, not the resin, and it was shimmering and giving the illusion that it wasn't covered canvas so it looked like raw canvas popping through but it wasn't just being sure to be sure sorry any Irish people that I might have offended then you know um I love doing accents but we're at a time where in our day and age where it can be um misunderstood by people that you're taking the piss out of them and if I ever do an accent, it's all because I enjoy the other country's sounds of words. And um, I bet you there's quite a few of you too who enjoy listening to other people's way they speak and language and word pronunciation. And before you know it, it's easy to join in with what you think is um, fun. But I don't know reckon the world's a bit of a funny place these days but that's a whole other topic isn't it easy to um offend people and you know you've had no intentions at all of hurting their feelings in fact it's the last thing you want to be doing I know that most of us as creators you know we're trying to bring joy and happiness into the world um visually by offering nice, interesting pieces to for people to look at and to bring them an experience of being uplifted. And also through the process of creation, we're experiencing our own joy. And um, it's all very cool. All right. Oh, I don't know about that bit up there. I need to work out a different way that I can look at it because I can't get to the other side of the table. Oh, this is good. I'm using my hand and seeing where it's reflecting and non-reflecting. Oh, see, there was a tiny bit right in there. That's better. So, you know, it is straightforward but can be a bit fiddly. I'll tell you, if you've got a table that you can get around to all the edges in, it's probably easier. Not probably, definitely. All right, I think we're ready for the final torch and we're just going to let it cure. Oh. That's me just complaining because, well, I'm in a complaining mood, aren't I? good 
See you tomorrow morning.